Hello, my name is Meher Arar. Sorry I could not join you for today's ceremony. All CCR staff and I are humbled to have been chosen this year's recipient of the Little A. Moffett International Human Rights Award. This award means a tremendous amount to us. It means that there are still Americans out there who value our struggle for justice. It means that there are Americans out there who are truly concerned about the future of America. We now know that my story is not a unique one. Over the past two years, we have heard from many other people who, were, who have been kidnapped, unlawfully detained, tortured, and eventually released without being charged with any crime in any country. My nightmare began on September 26, 2002. I was transiting through New York Airport, JFK Airport. When they asked me to wait in a waiting area, I found that to be strange. Shortly after, some FBI officials came to see me and they asked me whether uh, I was willing to be interviewed. My first and immediate reaction was to ask for a lawyer and I was surprised when they told me that I had no right to a lawyer because I was not an American citizen. Eventually on October 8th, against my will, they took me out of my cell. They basically read a piece of document to me saying that we will be sending you to Syria. And when I complained, I said to them, I did explain to you that if I'm sent back, I will be tortured. And they, I remember the INS person flipped a couple of pages in this document to the end of this document and read to me a paragraph that I still remember until today. It's extremely shocking statement she made to me. She said something like, the INS is not the body or the agency that signed the Geneva Convention, Convention against torture. For me, what that really meant is we will send you to torture and we don't care. After 12 hours of detention, unlawful detention in Jordan, I was eventually driven to Syria. And I just didn't want to believe that I was going to Syria. I always was hoping that someone, a miracle would happen. The Canadian government would intervene a miracle would happen that would take me back to my country, Canada. I arrived in Syria that same day, at the end of the day, and I was able to confirm that I was in fact in Syria after my blindfold was, was removed and I was able to see the pictures of the Syrian president. My feeling then, my feeling then is I just wanted to kill myself because I knew what was coming. I knew that the Americans, the American government, sent me there to be tortured. Around midnight, they took me to the basement. They asked one of the guards to take me to the basement. In the basement, the guard opened a door for me, a metallic door. I could not believe my eyes. I looked at him and I said, what is that? He didn't answer. He just said to me, enter. The cell was about three feet wide, six feet deep, and about seven feet high. It was dark. There was no source of light in it. It was filthy. There were only two thin covers on the floor. I was naive. I thought they would keep me in this place for one, two, maybe three days to put pressure on me. But this same place, the same cell that I later called the grave, was my home for 10 months and 10 days. The only light that came into the cell was from the ceiling, from the opening in the ceiling. There was a small spotlight and that's it. Life in the cell was impossible. At the beginning, even, it was, even though it was a filthy place, it was like a grave, I preferred to stay in that cell rather than being beaten 
Whenever I heard the guards coming to open my door, I would just, you know, think this is it for me. That would be my last day. The beating started the following day. Without no warning, Without no warning, the interrogator came in with a cable and he asked me to open my right hand. I did open it and he hit me strongly on, on my palm and it was so painful to the point that I forgot every moment I enjoyed in my life. This moment is still vivid in my mind because it was the first time that I was ever beaten in my life. Then he asked me to open my left hand. He hit me again and that one missed and hit my wrist. The pain from that hit lasted approximately six months. And then he would ask me questions and I had to answer very quickly. And then he would repeat the beating. This time anywhere on my, on my body. During this time, I wasn't aware that my wife launched a campaign with other human rights organizations. My wife lobbied the media, she lobbied politicians, and eventually I was released, the Syrians released me, and they clearly stated through the ambassador in Washington that they did not any link, find any links to terrorism. I was not charged in any country, including Canada, United States, Jordan, and Syria. Since my release, I have been suffering from anxiety, constant fear, and depression. My life will never be the same again. But I promised myself one thing, that I will continue my quest for justice as long as I have a breath. What keeps me going is my faith. Americans like yourselves and the hope that one day our planet Earth will be free of tyranny, torture, and injustice.